talking with the experts. Jen Liddy in episode 364 discusses content creation, how to easify it so it works for you. Yeah, a lot of people who create content will tell me oh, straight up that they don't like talking about pain points. I want to avoid talking about pain points as much as possible. And I, I, I always ask them, you know how you've struggled with something in your life and maybe you've never been able to put your finger on it or you've, or people around you have kind of rolled their eyes when you talk about it, or you've never even quite figured out what the pain is. And somebody has said it back to you in the most perfect way. That's what you're doing for your audience. It's not manipulative. It's not gross. It's a marketing mirror. You are reflecting back to them something that they need to hear so that they say, oh my God, this person understands me. In such- Welcome to Talking with the Experts. This is where we discuss great ideas to take your business to the next level. How do we know these ideas work? Well, it's because we're talking with business owners who are using these ideas. Business owners who have years of experience and expertise. All things business by business owners for business owners. And now, here is your host, Rose Davidson. Hello, and welcome to Talking with the Experts. I'm your host, Rose Davidson from rosedavidson.com. Talking with the Experts is about all things business, by business owners, for business owners. You can find it on all good podcasting, streaming platforms, and on YouTube. My next guest is Jen Liddy. And we're going to be discussing why solopreneurs are completely overwhelmed by the churning need to um, have content constantly but they don't know what to say. They don't know how to say it or sometimes even why they're doing it. And it's a dreadmill. I love that. It's another Jenism. (laughs) They can't step off. So content creation and how to easify it so it works for you is Jen's topic for today. And Jen is, um, she left her high school teaching career to avoid a life doomed by grading crappy ninth grade Romeo and Juliet essays. Oh, yes, you poor thing. In 2013, she made a terrifying leap into entrepreneurship and learned everything the hard way. Today, as a content creation specialist, Jen helps personal brands step off the content creation dreadmill. Oh, yes, I love that word. Become better writers and get out of content chaos. Welcome, Jen, and thank you so much for joining me today. I'm so happy to talk with you, Rose. Nice to meet you. Looking forward to chatting all things content. Now, why did you want to leave these lovely little grade nine students? (laughs) You know, it wasn't actually the students. It was um, the grading, which was relentless. And I found that when I would grade something and give them feedback, it wasn't the grading, it was the giving them feedback. And they Mm. would would spend hours giving them feedback on their writing and they would look at the grade and crumple it up and throw it in 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 the garbage can. And that's just like how teenagers are, right? Like they're all about like, what's in this for me? It's not actually that different from our audience. What's in it for me is always what our audience is asking. But really- It was the technology I left teaching um, right as like iPhones were really becoming much more prevalent and and technology was seeping into everything. And my my students, I felt like I was just policing them all the time and not educating them. And that was one thing. And then the other reason I left was... um, the parents, the parents just got to be, you know, so helicoptery and everything. If their student, if their child wasn't getting the grades they thought their child should get versus their children was their child, their child wasn't earning the grades, right? It was always uh, the fault of the teachers. And I just felt there was just this shift coming. And I am really glad I left education, even though I'm still a teacher and it's at the heart of everything I do, because then when 2020 hit, I thought, oh my God, these poor, exhausted, overworked teachers. Mm. So I just, I feel like teachers, I love teachers so much and I want to love up on them because they work so hard and they are so unrewarded in terms of money or time or freedom. Um, But I left because I just wanted more. I personally wanted more freedom in my life. Mm, I don't blame you. It's got to be hard to be a teacher. Um, When I was like quite small, I either wanted to be an actress or a teacher or Mm -hmm. a nurse or a nurse. Did you ever do any of those three? 
um, well, what I do in my job now, I do teach. Um, mm -hmm. I, I get in front of the camera, so I'm an actress. Mm -hmm. And I'm a nurse because I'm a mum. So, you know, I, <laughs> there you go. You did it. All of the three. There may not be a career, but, you know, I've still fulfilled the Check. Book. Anyway, that's it. Yeah. But, uh, okay, so content creation. I love that word dreadmill um, because I'm not really good at it. I just look at the keyboard and I think, ah. And, you know, <laughs> ah. So mm -hmm. how can we get better at it? How, you know, for the people oh, that don't so many... like doing it, as you say, um, you know, they just feel like it's like a, a constant treadmill, dreadmill, whatever. And how do they get off that? And how do they start enjoying it? Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, um, I would I would ask, Rose, do you love doing your podcast? Oh, I love it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's content. You are already creating content in a way that you love. It's the, And so a lot of people... Um, equate content creation with social media and mm -hmm. social media is a platform. It is a tool. It is a medium, but it is not equal to content creation. So for example, I've had clients who always said to me, I should start a blog. I'm going to start a blog. I want to start a blog, but they hate writing. It feels laborious to them to do writing. So it's like, well, why in the world would you write a blog if it's just taking every, sucking everything out of your soul, right? So I always ask people first, where do you love to be? What feels like breathing to you? Some people really love getting on video and doing a YouTube channel is very intuitive to them. Some people uh, would much prefer to only do a podcast with their voice and never with, you know, ever being seen. Some people love Instagram and they just want to get on Instagram and make reels every day because they think that that's fun and intuitive. And other people are like, say, using the platform of LinkedIn and they love the, the formality of that. And they, they know that that's where their audience is. So there's this nexus between what you love to do and what feels natural to you and where your audience is. So the first thing is, start there. Stop expecting yourself to be everywhere. That's a really uh, quick road to burnout town because uh, there's no way given your capacity, whether you are a solopreneur and you maybe have a, an assistant working for you a few hours a week, or you have a larger company and you, know, you don't want to throw all your resources into all the marketing, you really have to assess what's working best for your brand, what's working best for you, for your voice, for your comfort zone. So that's the very first step in making this all easier is almost giving yourself permission that I do not have to do it all. In fact, I, I, there's no way I could do it all. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, you're right. A podcast is content. Um, I think people would prefer me to um, have a bit of written content. And when I was young, I used to love writing stories. Mm -hmm. but as mm -hmm. I got older, I got out of the habit of it or, you know, I just, I don't find them interesting. I, you know, maybe I need to go back to my childhood and <laughs> do <laughs> some inner child work. That's it. Find out what the hell's going on. <laughs> Well, you know, was, for take for example, taking your podcast, if you wanted to turn it into written pieces, it wouldn't be that hard. So you record your audio, you also record video, you could upload that to a transcript service like Otter, mm. and then you'll have a piece of content that maybe needs to, well, it definitely will need to be cleaned up and formatted. Um, but, and then you could pull out the gems for if you wanted to promote your podcast using socials, but it wouldn't be like you would need to recreate the wheel ever. And you can take the gems from the um, podcast transcript and then translate them into a shorter email driving people back to the podcast. So it's just a matter of re repurposing so that you're not doing more than you have to do. Yeah, so why do we as entrepreneurs make content creation so hard and so complicated why do we mm -hmm. think it's hard and complicated <laughs> part of it is um that, that we're trying to do too much but um the other part of it is we're just a lot of times doing it for the sake of doing it which doesn't get us anywhere so I'm curious if any of your listeners wake up in the morning and they think oh crap I need to I need to get something out on Instagram today because I haven't posted on Instagram in, in several days and so then they like rack their brain all morning trying to think of something then they they take the time to do it but it's not with any real strategy it's a tactic but it's not married to any purpose or goal so 
um, that can feel very draining for us and make it harder than it is. So I always ask my clients, what is the purpose of the content that you'll be creating for the next four to six weeks? What are you seeding into your audience's minds so that they can become familiar with whatever topic or point or shift or information you want them to have or make? Um, so that by the time something happens in four to six weeks, like for example, say you had a group program that you were trying to fill and it was launching in the next eight weeks. Well, your content until then should really be all of the information that those people need to know in terms of what to believe, the myths that they might be thinking of, some information. And then that's purpose-driven. But when you wake up every day and you're like, ah, oh, I just got to get something out there. And it's just, it's just splattering. I have one client, she says like, oh, I just used to splatter everything, you know, spaghetti against the wall. I said, Allie, it's not just spaghetti. It was rigatoni and linguine. It was like all of the pastas against the wall. And once she understood that, like my, my, the purpose of my content is to do a heavy lift for me in my business. Then it becomes very purposeful. That's a, that's one way to make it easier also is to start with why am I putting content out there? Yeah, that's really great advice, and I I love that. I mean, I, yeah, I've I've just started re-posting on my socials. I I don't um haven't done it for a long time, and I thought, well, I'll do for rest of this month, and and I've already got October's already set up, so uh, I just need to you know, put those into the scheduler. But um yeah, it just uh, I think if you become dedicated and just set you know two or three hours aside a month and just do it and as you say be purposeful it really isn't that difficult and it's not hard especially for me to find content because you say I've got my podcast and I can just pull bits and pieces out of the course that I'm um, hoping to mm. launch next year so I can just take bits and pieces out of that or take bits and pieces out of um, you know the ad and promos that I'm posting in in groups and whatever so it it, it it's not necessarily hard but we we think it's hard we put a, and we, we, make put it a hard. we put a mind yeah. block up. That's a big one that I, this has always been hard. It's never gotten me anywhere. It's felt like a waste of time. So why should I do it? But imagine if you knew your why, right? Like you knew, oh, I'm, I have um, all of my October content is written and it took me about two or three hours because I know what I wanted it to do for me by the end of October. But the other thing that um, you kept saying, like pull a bit of this and pull a bit of that. And that is really important because Especially when you when you have a, a meaty piece of content, I call it a home based content, like a like like your podcast. It can be longer, it can be in depth, it can be you know faceted and nuanced. But if you're repurposing that on a platform where your audience likes to have short, snackable nuggets, you can really say less. You and so another mistake or that people make long uh, make harder for them is they say too much. Your mm. audience is very much at capacity and they can they're they're on socials to you know to learn a little bit but mostly to be entertained so you can say less and chop it up into longer amounts of time that you're saying it and you can talk about a topic for a long time you don't have to come up with a new topic every single day and that is another thing that people do to make content creation harder like okay say i send an email to my audience to my email list once a week. And I have to, I think like, oh, I have to come up with an epic, beautiful email. It's long, it's meaty, it's juicy every single week on a different topic. Well, you're going to burn out so fast because that's a lot of work for you to craft those emails. It's also a lot of work for your audience to read and try to plow through and keep up with that. So imagine taking a topic that you want to talk about that's purposeful, but breaking it up into four or five, six smaller bite-sized subtopics so that you just engage them with a little bit. I call it the fish food model rather than fire hosing them with everything. It's like, here's a little bit of fish food, take what you like, go back to your little castle, digest it, come back for more when you're ready. And we just have to remember that our audiences are at as much capacity as we are. We're so tired, but we're making it harder than it needs to be. So yeah, that strategy is another way to make it easier. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. I, 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 I've made mine all into graphics and then just put um, something in the in the, um, the bio section up the top, um, just so that uh, you know if the graphics turns it turns out a little bit small, like the uh, the font mm -hmm. on it, 
um, so that they can still read it. But yeah, little little pieces because you've got like something like seven seconds to impress somebody yep, with whatever it is. Yeah, and sometimes four, three to four seconds maybe. And if you don't, you don't grab them straight away, they're just going to scroll past you anyway. Yeah, yeah. So those are some easy shifts that anybody could make in terms of making the content easier. And you were right. It does start with our mindset of, I, this has always been hard and it hasn't gotten me anywhere. And until you start making some shifts, it will continue to not get you anywhere. And I just wanted to talk about one more shift for people mm. to make, to get some more traction. Uh, there's two little tips that are very helpful. One is to always think about what your audience needs. I referenced at the top of the conversation, like what's in it for you. That's what your audience is thinking. What's in it for me? What? Why is this relevant to me? So those those posts or those emails where it's all about you and your thoughts and what you think and your experience or those those posts on you know in Instagram where somebody says, I'm so honored to be invited to speak at blah 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 blah. Like people will, you know, like, oh that's lovely, but they're not, they're not really that interested. Yeah, who you cares? have to make who cares? <laughs> You have to make them care. And the only reason people care as humans is when it's something about them. So the first thing is every, every time you create an I statement in your content, how can you switch it to be a you statement, thinking about what they would get out of it or why it would be interesting to them. That is a huge shift in content creation it that is. gets more engagement. Why should your audience care about this thing? How does it affect them? How can it make their life better? Yeah, and you've got to you've got to um, you know hit those pain points, the pain points of your audience. Um, if you're not hitting their pain points and their things that are really keeping them awake at night and um, you know bothering them, they're not going to be interested anyway because they want a solution to whatever it is that ails them. Yeah, a lot of people who create content will tell me oh, straight up that they don't like talking about pain points. I want to avoid talking about pain points as much as possible. And I, I, I always ask them, you know how you've struggled with something in your life and maybe you've never been able to put your finger on it or you've, or people around you have kind of rolled their eyes when you talk about it, or you've never even quite figured out what the pain is. And somebody has said it back to you in the most perfect way. That's what you're doing for your audience. It's not manipulative. It's not gross. It's a marketing mirror. You are reflecting back to them something that they need to hear so that they say, oh my God, this person understands me in such a deep way that I really have never felt this seen before. And that is the gift of talking about pain points. And it's another way that makes content do more for you because it helps your audience think this person really gets me. Yeah, I get a little bit mm, annoyed. I can maybe annoyed is probably a bit of a strong word, but yeah, the ones that um, I can do this for you and I can do that for you and I can do something. Yeah. Well, I don't care what you can do for me. I want you to know how you can help me, you know. What um, results are you going to help me yeah, achieve? Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, I'd rather know that than, you know, this big long story about how they got to what they did and I'm not really That's interested. That's focused yeah. yeah, that I focused up is a real turnoff. And one of the things that we all want to remember in 2022, moving into 23 is our audiences are so savvy there. It's not a 2013 audience. It's not a 2019 audience. Mm -hmm. These people have been burnt or they have bought something and it didn't work out for them or they didn't make the, they weren't able to make the change. So they're savvy and they're, they, they are not going to take any more shenanigans about like, I am, I am the, the source of your transformation. No, you are the source of your transformation. I can help you get there. I can teach you all the hows, but it's really your story. And that is a shift that some content creators haven't made yet. Cause they're still standing on stage talking about me, 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 when it's really about you, 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 you. Mm. Yeah. That's really great advice. Thank you for pointing that out because it, um, you know, through, lockdown and everything people didn't have anything better to do than scroll through Facebook or Instagram right. or LinkedIn right. or any of the social media platforms out there and you know they got sick but well, I'm sure they got sick of the the I stories I can do this and I can do that mm -hmm. I mean I find them to be a little bit egotistical to be honest but mm -hmm. that that's just uh that's just my thinking and I'd rather know that mm, you're thinking of me as a as a yes potential client um exactly and, and what I can get out of it but you're right it's the whiff them it's the what's in it for me 
and mm-hmm. it, and that's what that's how people are, are now. It's more so than ever. I think that people are transforming into the WIFM than than they were previously before the lockdowns. I think it's kind of empowering if you think about it because people are understanding that, okay, maybe in the past I've put all my eggs in this basket of this other person. And I've really wanted that other person to be responsible for my change, but I have to be responsible for my own change. And your content needs to speak to them in that way. Like it's, it's about you. It's about what you need. We can do it in the way that works for you. I really think people understand now there's not a one size fits all way to do anything. And so they're, they're very wary of anything that's a one size fits all solution. Or, and I actually wish more people were wary of that because I still think there's an element of our population that's wishing somebody would make it just like, you know, boop with your magic wand and then it all goes away. But um, that's not the real, that's not the way it works. And if you promise that in your content that you're going to solve their problem, when they get into your program, they're going to be shocked to find out, oh, I have to do some work here, right? So I think that if your content can really focus on them and empower them to think about, I see your pain. I don't want to manipulate it, but I I also know there's a solution for you. We can figure out the solution together and this is how your life will be better. That's a really great recipe for more engaging content that lands with your audience. Yeah, I agree. And I think we we all have to get out of this uh the naughties uh, mentality and and you know actually move with the times and upgrade our um, our thinking as content creators. Mm-hmm. I love that. Oh, good. You could use that. I'm write it down. <laughs> I have no idea what I said, but <laughs> you, you said it's time to upgrade our thinking as content creators, and that is it. That is it right there. Yeah, absolutely. I'm having a senior moments today, so you'll have to excuse <laughs> me. Like the this tiniest word I could, I just can't think of. I don't know why. It must be Mercury retrograde or something stupid like it that. It is actually. <laughs> Just total mental blocks today. I don't know why. <laughs> Weird. Jen, um, I don't suppose you've written any books or have a podcast or anything like that you'd like to talk about? Yeah, I have a podcast called Content Creation Made Easy. <laughs> it's just straight up, that's what it is. Um, and we talk about all of the things, all of the strategies, all the tactics. I like to bring on experts who are specifically knowledgeable in a field. So I love to talk about content creation in general. And then I bring people on, you know, like a LinkedIn expert or a Pinterest expert, for example, because everybody's got a different platform that they love to be on. And I've really narrowed down the problems that my people struggle with, which is number one, they don't think they're good writers. So that's a problem because it's, it's hard to maintain people's interest if you don't know how to write in a way that they can actually hear it. But, and the second problem that most content creators struggle with is their messaging is fuzzy they like talk in kind of broad sweeping generalities or they're like highly technical or academic. It doesn't matter because it's all going over the head of their audience. So they don't have like a strong brand voice or message. And then the third problem that keeps content creators in their current chaos is they don't have systems that are personalized for them to get their stuff out of their head. So even if you do know how to write, you don't have a, you do have a message, but you don't have a system. It never gets out of your head. So those are the three major things that I talk about over and over on the, on the podcast. And it's funny. And I want to just say this for everybody who's listening or for anyone who's listening. If you think you're saying something again and again and again, and you are wondering like, oh my God, I said this in three podcasts ago or five podcasts ago, your audience needs to hear it many, many, many times because not everyone hears all of your stuff, reads all of your stuff, sees all of your stuff. And when they see it, it doesn't mean that it resonates or landed or absorbed. So we get to say these things over and over again, which leads to another challenge as a creator, which is It's boring to say the same things over and over and over again. And if you're listening and you have people who live in your house and you have to tell them 17 times to pick up their socks before they pick up their socks, you know what I'm talking about. Like it's boring. So that is one of the bigger challenges for creators. They're like, oh, I have so many ideas. I want to say this and I have this to share. But you are always going back to like probably five or six common themes that you're always talking about. So don't be afraid to repeat yourself in your content. That's and, important. Um, yeah. And I've got to say, there's a lot of AI uh, applications, apps out there that can help you with, 
your mm. content creation. If you're, you know, not very good at grammar or, or whatever, get one of the um, AI things because they're just like amazing. I use yeah. mine quite often. To which uh, one do you like? I like Jarvis. Okay. Um, and I've got Good. another one that for for um, for my podcast that I I do all my content creation in there. I've just started using it, and I love how it takes a line out of something, and then it just creates this whole blog. It's amazing. Mm, that is amazing. Yeah, it's absolutely, and I love it. So it um it 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 helps in in such a way that you know I don't have to continually use my brain and rack my brain to find something <laughs> yes. to say. Yes, because um you know some people you know. The, they fill out the guest form for the podcast and they put their subject in and 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 then they tell me a little bit about it. Sometimes it's only about two lines and I can't really mm. make anything out of that because I don't know what's going on inside their head and, you know, I don't want to put words in their mouth. So this, um, this oh, app that's is, brilliant. I love it. I absolutely love it. It's called, what is it called? Uh, Renotes. Renotes. Oh, yeah. I love it. I only discovered it the other day and I thought, oh, and it's that's nice. great it's so cheap it's so cheap to use and jarvis is a little bit expensive if you want to go to the to um the second paid level but mm -hmm. i just use the uh the lower tier one and it gets me by so the only thing a is lot it of people restricts think... you and it, it only restricts you to 400 characters which is um, disappointing mm. 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 but a lot of people would think oh is that cheating and it's, so. it's like the ideas are yours, right? Like you've said mm. them and maybe you need to say them in several different ways to get your audience mm. to hear. But it's just to me, like when I used to be an English teacher, some of my colleagues would say that listening to audiobooks was cheating. And so that I, they didn't want me to have my, my, my reluctant readers to listen to audiobooks versus read like Lord of the Flies, for example. Oh my like, God. <laughs> the ideas are still getting into your brain through your ears versus your eyes. Like what is the difference? And so I would encourage people to please use those things. The, the, the platforms and the market demands that we show up and that we, we get to do it in our way, right? Like, mm -hmm. but we do have to show up and anything that can make it easier is really yes. our, our, we get to do that. Yeah, well, some people are um, audio learners anyway, you know, they, they don't yes. like to read things. And so, you know, um, my dad taught me this thing like years ago when I was tiny and I had to remember a poem to stand up in front of the class to, to recite. And he said, if you read it um, before going to bed, directly before going to mm. bed, and then put it under your pillow and then get up in the morning and read it as soon as you wake up, he said, you'll remember it. And yeah. I thought, and, it, and it's true that it, it, it actually does work. And yeah. uh, I was like amazed. So yeah. Yeah. Well, thing. there's, so I think that one of the bigger things that people can take away is give yourself permission to mm -hmm. make it easier and to not expect of yourself that you're supposed to be doing everything all the time, everywhere. It's impossible. It will burn you out. Mm -hmm. And unless you're doing content strategically to help you achieve a goal, it's such a time suck and it will feel like a giant waste of your time. Absolutely. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, because, it, and and if you use the AI thing, and I don't say I think it's cheating. And I know I like another platform. It's called, um, oh God, I can't remember now what it's called, but oh, Grammarly, <laughs> Grammarly, the paid version okay, Grammarly, of Grammarly. Yes. I love it. It, yeah. like, it just changes and, and makes my writing so much better. Um, yeah, and people I, love Grammarly. Yeah, I love yeah. Grammarly. I mean, it's not 100%, but nothing is 100%. You know, it's not <laughs> right. yours. But. You're not even 100%, right? Like, think about the, you know, we're not even as humans 100%. <laughs> no. So, <yeah. laughs> no, it's especially when you're yeah, having yeah, senior yeah. moments, your brain's just not there. <laughs> yes. yes. Jen, where can people find you if they'd like to work with you or they want to learn a bit more? Yeah, my website is jenliddy.com. That's J-E-N. I'm a one N Jen, <laughs> L-I-D-D-Y.com. And I'm on pretty much all the social channels, depending on, you know, what you like to be on. I probably show up on Facebook and Instagram the most. I'm I'm in my 50s, so I still really like Facebook. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but so I'm also I. on, you know, my my assistant, I, I have a presence on TikTok and but mostly Instagram and Facebook. Yeah. Yeah, I still like Facebook. It's and I'm in my 60s. I love it. <laughs> Jen, yeah. um, before we go today, have you got anything that you'd like to share with us? Oh, 
You know, one of the problems that people struggle with is that planning piece, that systems and planning piece. So I took a nugget out of my bigger system and I break it down for people with how to create, how to plan content in a way that is that does all of the things that we talked about today. So people can grab that at uh, jenliddy.com slash content planner. And it's actually, it's not just like a big empty page of squares that tells you to like post it behind the scenes today. It actually explains the process and makes it easier for you. So people have found that to be a really helpful downloadable. So go to jenlady.com slash content planner. Perfect. Thank you so much for that. Any last words of wisdom that you'd like to share with us today? Um, I, I really want to go back to the giving yourself permission hiring help for things that are outside, even if it's for two hours a week to have somebody schedule your stuff, if that would make your life easier. I remember the moment I hired somebody for five hours to take over posting my blog and my email every week. And it was like, oh my God, it was such a game changer for me. It was amazing. Um, So really, how can you make this easier? What platforms aren't working for you anymore? What do you want to stop doing? Just, Just giving yourself permission for all of those things. So that you have the energy and the focus to lean into what is working and do more of that. Yeah, great advice. Thanks for sharing that. Jen, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for being here today and for sharing your wisdom with us. Thank you, Rose. And I hope somebody out there got a little nugget that can help. (laughs) I'm sure they would have. Bye for now. Bye. You've been listening to Talking with the Experts, hosted by Rose Davidson. Make sure you have a look at our back catalogue over at talkingwiththeexperts.com and be sure to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss out on any episode. We look forward to your company next time. Talking with the Experts.